This video is made possible by CodeNotary.io, tamper-proof notarization for all your digital objects. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we have a special treat because we're going to be seeing how an IBM mainframe gets started from cold machine all the way to having the operating system in our case here uh, ZOS and ZVM running and um, users being able to connect but it's also a special reason here for this video today because I have here sitting right next to me Sebastian Wind and that's the person you see here walking in the video um, his uh, here uh, visiting me. We're going to go together later today to share the IBM uh, mainframe related uh, conference that I think happens once or twice a year. Twice. Twice a year. And so welcome, uh, Sebastian. In this video, we're actually going to see how we start your mainframe, and I, a mainframe that you actually own privately, right? Yes, it's a Z9 Enterprise class. Okay, it's a Z9 EC Yes. Enterprise class. And uh, how old is this mainframe? Um, 2006. 2006. Yeah. Okay. And up to 2008. Okay. So it was, oh, they were offering between 2006 and 2008. Yeah. And uh, so you acquired this computer for how much money? Zero. Zero. You got it for free. And how much did it cost new? Um, like 1.4 million. This video that, we're, that you actually posted on your own YouTube channel we see that uh, you're going to the data center to get this computer. How did you get it for free? Um, so there was a mainframe swap and the Z9 was about to be trashed and I couldn't let that happen. Okay, well I agree with you. And so th this video we show how you got the computer out and you had to disassemble yourself. Uh, was it difficult? Yes, um, uh, I this put it in my garage first and then it goes... This is the mainframe that we're yes. seeing right now. Yeah. Okay. So you put it in your own garage at home? Yes, and then I disassembled the mainframe and put every piece in, in my basement. How did you make sure you're, you were connecting all the cables right? I, I just remembered them. And so what we see here is just the CPU without any storage. What did you do for storage? So for the storage, um, it is a DS6800. Mm -hmm. And I got it later on because it was uh, still in use for some time there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Is this near your home now? This is uh, in front of my home. So, uh, in Germany, right? So in, Germany. in uh, Leipzig. Yes. Next to the university. And so th they're unloading it here. Oh, that's you. It was too that's heavy you on the left with the blue yeah. t-shirt. Yeah. And so, uh, what about power? What kind of electricity does this mainframe need? So you need three-phase uh, power mm -hmm. uh, cables. Yeah. Okay. And you got, you had three-phase power already in your in your basement? Yeah, we have three-phase power, but not those um, connectors. So I had to um, create yeah, a connector. Install the connectors. Yeah. Okay. You did it yourself. Um, my uncle helped me. See here, you had to bring it in. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's amazing. Even little things become a problem when the machine. How heavy was the machine? This is about one ton. One ton. Yeah. One metric ton. So one frame is about one ton. Yeah. The the left frame is a little bit lighter because. Oh, it was two frames. Yeah. The left frame is lighter because it. Oh, is I like this part when you lift the garage yeah. door. And you see the mainframes. That's a Z9, as you can see here. Amazing. And so in this video, we're going to show how you uh, cold start this mainframe from zero, right? All the way yes. to having it running. That's what this video is about. So over to you, Sebastian. Most of the videos on the channel are about emulated mainframes. But in this video, I want to show you how to start at IPL a real IBM Z mainframe. It is a Z9 mainframe with 64 GB of memory, 8 CPUs and 2000 MIPS. It is capable of running ZOS up to the version of 2.1 and also ZVM. And now listen to the sound when it starts up.
So basically all we did up to this point was to connect the mainframe with the right power cables, then unlock the power supplies and finally flip the power switch. So now the support elements are coming up and when they are online we can start to manage our mainframe. This will take some time and uh, but there's nothing too spectacular happening at the moment. The support elements are just like ordinary ThinkPads. They are running a Linux based operating system that is used to manage the mainframe hardware. They are connected to an uh, internal switch to communicate to the components of the mainframe. We have two of them for redundancy reasons. The support elements are like the BIOS of a mainframe, but they have much more functionalities and they are much more serviceable. <laughs> I don't know the exact um, sequence of starting the airport, and I have to get funny. Yeah. But it's, it's not like you could do something terribly wrong in that track. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, yeah. I, I got the I got the TSS people to screen. Usually here, but would, like, would you have higher cages here as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now the SEs are up. I skipped the logon for you. Now we are on the work area. There's the CPC P00B86E. And I look at the activity. Now we see the watts and BTUs. Um, the next thing I have to do is uh, to, to look for the service status. I have to set it in the service status to perform changes on the system because I'm logged on as the service user. So now uh, enable service status, press yes and the machine is in the service status. Now we are taking a look at something that really scares me. It is the hardware messages panel. Now um, hardware messages are most likely always something bad. Um, also this time something failed and this is always a thing that, that uh, really bugs me. I want my machine to be in a perfect, um, just in a perfect condition. Um, luckily this time it was a van controller and I al already had those uh, as spare parts in stock. So I was able to repair it um, and I will do a video about this, how to repair a mainframe while it's running. It's not hard to do, but you need the parts and some of those are pretty expensive. Now uh, the next step is to perform a power on reset. We have to load the profile for our LPAS and this is done uh, doing the power on reset. Now I have a bunch of predefined um, profiles and I select the A2 one because I, I know this is the correct one for my configuration right now. Um, this will take some time to load this, uh, do the power and reset and uh, after that we can start to activate uh, our LPAS. A power and reset is comparable to a server restart. So um, if you have some weird performance degradations or something like this, one thing you might want to try is a power and reset. Um, mainframes after all aren't restarted all the time like, like distributed systems but uh, this could sometimes also help. Now the power on reset is in progress. It will take some time to, uh, to perform this and after the power on reset we will see the different LPAS um, which we can activate after that. Now here are my different LPAS on the machine. I have uh, two coupling facilities. Uh, the LPA 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Um, LPA 3 is a ZOS, LPA 4 also. LPA 5 is a ZVM. And LPA 6 is my favorite LPA, it's ZOS 2.1. Now, um, these LPAs need to be activated. You can do this step by step or select all of them and just uh, activate and it will work uh, down the list um, and activate them. Um, so the activation will mm, 
most likely be success successful anyways because um, there's nothing involved with the storage server at this point. Um, after the ALPA is activated uh, you can perform a load and this one is more critical because um, there you need the data from the storage server and if there's something wrong you won't have a successful load. Now we come uh, to the most exciting part and that is the load. So of course you cannot load coupling facilities as they are just microcode. Um, but we can load the ALPA profiles and the parameters we have there uh, are from the power and reset. Um, so um, one good thing is uh, that you will see very fast if the load was successful or not. So if your storage uh, server is not delivering anything, you will see a, the failed message pretty fast. And if your storage server is in place, you will see that it is successful. So the load is the IPL itself. So after the load, we can see the operating system messages. And this is basically the um, operator console for the operating system. Now I load all the L paths. Um, you can see at LPA3 that the system behind that is an ADCD image. You also get those ADCD images when you buy ZDNT. And my system and setup was an academic system, so it was uh, just used for training. Um, and I have also those uh, clean images on it. As you can see, the loads were successful and I moved on to the HMC. Uh, the HMC is a way to manage your mainframe uh, remotely. Uh, so if you don't have access to your support elements or something like this, you will need the HMC to manage your mainframe hardware. In the next video, I will show you what you can do with the mainframe at home. So uh, thanks for watching. I know this type of content is not very easily reproducible. So please write me a comment if you like it or not and if you have any questions. So thanks again. Goodbye. Thank you very much, uh, Sebastian. I really enjoyed the sound of this computer. It's almost like a jet engine starting. Yes, it's like um, the awakening of a monster when it <laughs> uh, spins up. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, one of the nice things about this uh, mainframes. And uh, how, how often can you is this good for the mainframe to start it and shut it down again if you do it often? Well, normally it is no problem, but sometimes there will be hardware messages and you have to replace some parts. So the, what you're saying is the starting and the shutting down often is not, is not the way the mainframe wants to be treated. Yes, I had two hardware messages until now. Uh, one broken DCA controller and the uh, van controller now, but those mm -hmm. were just small things. What's a DCA controller? Uh, DCA is like... Um, an add-on for the power supply okay all right and you have more videos coming in this series right yes um, in the next video i will repair the van controller that uh, broke this time and then we will also start an awesome application on the mainframe okay can't wait to see the rest thank you very much for sharing this video with us and thank you all for watching this video if you liked the work that uh, Sebastian has done in, uh, in having his own mainframe at home and then uh, recording it for us to see it, then please press on the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, I guess people are welcome to post comments below the video. Of course. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sebastian. Thanks. Thanks.